Begin by making all of your dimensional pieces to rock your pattern. Place it on top of two pieces of fabric that are right side together. Then polyester bottom batting. Sew on the outside solid line, cut on the outside dashed line. Now some of the pieces have been sewn all the way around. And then you cut all the way around on the dashed line. Then you're going to just trim one layer of fabric. So I'm really careful just to get one, like grab one thread, pull it out so you know you only have one layer. And this one I'm going to cut about three-fourths of the way down. And this is his foot, and it needs to be in a specific place to turn it right side out through that opening. Then I stuffed it and whip stitch it close. Now, when this is his body, and it's kind of strange because his arms have to be long enough to go around the egg, right? So then when you turn it, you're going to stuff up into his uh, hands and into his legs. And then I turned under his legs, quarter of an inch, and hand basted that around to hold it. And then that's going to go right over that opening. And then I'm going to carefully just do tiny stitches around to attach that. Now the head was cut out before it was sewn on the outside dash line. So I have the shape. And then the ears were stacked with two colors, the white and then another color. And I actually folded them in half this way and did a half inch dart tuck. Not really a dart because it doesn't go to a point, but a tuck. Then I laid them out uh, on the head like this. And then I'll put the other piece on top and then I'll sew it all the way around. Now I can either slit one layer where the snout goes or on the back I can slit where the lip is because that won't, either way will be hidden. Then I'll turn that right side out. Now here's that head and you can see where I've um, slit it, stuffed it, closed it up, whip stitched it close, that won't show because it'll be on the body. And then this snout I, after I've sewn it, take the paper out, I'll slit just right layer, one layer of fabric right here, turn it right side out, stuff it, and then close that opening, and then I'll just lay it on the head, sew down the middle. Then the nose is just a circle of fabric that I, I with double thread, I basted with pretty large stitches. I basted it around the outside and then I stuffed it and pulled it closed. And the trick on the nose is to really overstuff it. And then when, and then to close it, I'm going to go across uh, several times. That'll help round it too if I do it all different directions. Then I'm going to put the open side down right here at the top of the snout and as it rounds around like this it crowns I'm going to just do a running stitch right where that fabric meets the head and attach it on there and you can do different sized noses this is the larger size in the pattern he just has a lot of character now the body is so strange looking but the arms have to be long enough to hug those eggs okay so he looks kind of funny, but I turned him right side out and I just stuffed um, to where the seam is and then I stuffed his legs and then I turned his legs under a quarter of an inch and just hand basted it so it would stay. Then on the feet, I slit one layer right here, kind of about a third of the way down, stuffed it, closed it. And then what will happen is that opening will go right over the leg and I'll just carefully blind stitch that on and around so you'll get his little rabbit feet than the head. So the tummy was put on. It's a separate piece and I slit right here and then the head was slit here and then I'm going to just stitch that, just blind stitch it. Now when I blind stitch it, I don't stitch it right on the edge. I hold it in so it looks like it's floating. That way there's nothing on the back that's open that would show. Now we're going to paper piece this egg. So we're going to begin with area one, 
place the fabric, cut a piece bigger than area one, place it right side away on the unprinted side of the paper pattern so that all of that area is covered. And I can crease it to locate that line on this side. Then I'm going to take fabric for area two, which is pretty long because of these two tabs, and I'm going to place it right side down past that line, turn it over, sew on that whole line, trim the extra out of the seam, and then this will fold back and cover area two. And then I'll do the same thing with the top for area three. Then I press it really, really good. Um, there are two ways to do this. I'm, I can leave a little area open when I sewed it, or I can unpick it, but I'm actually going to uh, turn it through that seam. So I like to press it with the seam so I've got a nice sharp line and then unpick it, but you can also just not sew. Okay, then we're going to layer it with a solid piece of fabric, thin polyester bottom batting, sew all the way around, and then turn it through an opening. Then uh, I use Rick Rack to go over the seams. I just love Rick Rack on Easter things. I don't know why. Okay, and then I attach the egg in between the bunnies. And what that is, is the, the tab of the egg goes one way and the arm goes the other way. And you can sew it right on next to the body or up a little bit. But you want it so that this whole tab is sewn. Okay, does that make sense? The tab goes one way, the arm goes the other. Then I did another seam. And then I'll do egg bunny, egg bunny. And then I'll, I'll attach these together so when he sits up, he has plenty of room for holding an egg. And we'll show you that finish. He really turns out cute. He's just a funny little guy. And when his arms are together, they look okay. Okay, now we finished three bunnies and three eggs and we've attached them and tacked their little arms together so that they can hold their eggs. And I just love how this turned out and I hope this video's helped you.